How do you feed 7 billion people? Or 8? Or 9 billion? There's a reason that farmers are the most important part of every civilization. And maybe it's time they had a little help. Farming, a back-breaking, never-ending cycle of labor at the mercy of the elements, the economy, and hordes of rampaging emus. So we build stuff to make it easier. And now we even build and teach robots to farm. Um, hopefully they're slow learners. From the plow to the steam and then the gas tractor, to the thresher, crop duster, the combine harvester, and other machines that have probably also been used threateningly in movies. And now today's automated world, with the help of multi-crop harvesters, precise drip irrigation, aerial drones, and other technologies that aren't prone to, future farming is all about efficiency. Getting the most out of every acre of land with the least amount of effort. There is a tremendous need for automation almost at every step of the way, from the moment you prepare the ground for a seed and plant it in the ground and water it and put fertilizer, all the way until the plate of food showing up. The combination of data, AI, and IoT sensors, which um, come together to solve the problem of giving more in agriculture for less. Vertical farming, indoor farming, there's the whole idea of like, why grow vegetables and then ship them all the way across the continent or country when you grow them within your own city limits. 700 acres of farmland into the size of a big box retail store. And we harvest 365 days a year. We are able to condense the growth cycle to about 10 days for a lot of our products, which is about a 700% increase in yield. We are doing that all while saving about a million gallons of water per week and using about 1% of the land compared to traditional farming. So vertical rooftops are starting to make use of this vertical farming as a practice to not only secure food for their own purposes, but uh, also ensure that their countries and uh, geographies have enough food for their own people. And given the repetitive nature of farming, large-scale automation is becoming increasingly widespread. For the farmer, it should enable them to get better data and to uh, be more resilient against things like climate change or a bad season. The exception has always been the more delicate tasks that humans excel at, most of the time. The robot can actually identify is this fruit spoiled or does it need some more time to ripen? And it can actually get to the level of ensuring that the right produce, which is healthy uh, and fit for eating, can actually be picked and sent across to the market. This robotic strawberry picker, take a look, it delicately picks the fruit without bruising it. Combine that with systems for monitoring and managing a farm from drones to smart sensors, connected via satellite and 5G networks. Technology can also be used to monitor and manage livestock. It should be fine as long as they don't replace this friend with these guys. Robots are also being used in cattle and dairy farming. You know, weather forecasting companies, uh, there is more data coming in from satellites and we all kind of are witnessing more and more satellite launches, uh, you know, micro satellites that are able to give uh, us a uh, very high resolution of the happenings on the farm uh, at, a, at, at an everyday basis. You can actually see crop stress two weeks before you can see it with your naked eye. So it helps the farmer make the right decision in time before the crop has a loss. With precision agriculture, and better sensors and robots and drones and automation, not only can the farmer get better data, but you can more precisely apply fertilizer, pesticide, water, where it's needed, when it's needed. And new software solutions can help every step from planting, weather forecasting, to logistics and marketing. Even if farmers now might occasionally have to deal with- Have you tried turning it off and on again? You are looking at hardware vendors. You are looking at sensor companies. You're looking at machine vision companies entering into the market. You're also looking at robotic companies. And of course, you're also looking at uh, software firms, providing analytics, providing data. We all, again, see uh, many AI and analytical models that are being used um, ingesting all the data sources that I kind of just mentioned and being able to process those data sets to 
uh, give uh, actionable insight. While all these advances are a no-brainer for large farms, they can actually have a bigger impact on small farms, making them adaptable, efficient, more productive, and less dependent on changes in the environment. For most of California, the years-long mega drought is a slow-motion disaster. They're going to need it. So we have cooperative farms and collective farms around the world, but the idea of those farms that become more efficient to be able to produce more and really compete in the market and put that food more locally closer to the consumer. There are premium based uh, subscription services uh, which are available. At the bottom of the pyramid, there are really weather services which you know farmers uh, need on an everyday basis just to know, you know what's going to happen tomorrow and accordingly they could action. Farmer is increasingly become almost like a white collar job where they're managing data. Given the advancement in automation, some of the large farms that we observe Almost 25% of them are already using some kind of uh, mechanized and automated technologies to prepare lands, to put seeds, to harvest, to fertilize, to irrigate, etc. So I believe that is already happening where, you know, a conventional farmer is now becoming more a business sort of an operations professional. For the consumer, these solutions can mean cheaper produce, year-round seasonal food, and an end to empty supermarket shelves. The issue of food scarcity or the issue of sustainability is something which affects everyone. Effectively, the way it's going to affect the everyday man is that you're looking at a steady supply of produce, uh, you're not going to see a rise in prices. The vision is that controlled environment agriculture is one of the main solutions for producing food in a economically good way, but also uh, in a sustainable way. It should mean that you would get your food fresher, the supply chain will be more efficient, and you will be getting your, your food in a way that has been handled by fewer people, so therefore there's less chance of contamination. Almost one third of world's population in some way is related to farming, the farming sector. And uh, the challenge really is to have a social and a human equity, uh, you know, for example, minimum wages, you know, just to make sure there is no child labor, uh, they get all equal opportunities, get the basic rights, uh, you know, this is all going to come across only if the farming sector adopts technology and is able to get, you know, higher returns. And beyond the farms themselves, robotics and smart technologies are going to revolutionize all peripheral industries from logistics, food storage, transportation, and the markets we shop in. We're talking about drones, we're talking about autonomous tractors, uh, we're talking about the use of an analytics. Uh, all of this is expected to generate a revenue of approximately $12 billion over the next five years globally. Uh, and what's also interesting is that the growth or the rate at which the market is growing is well beyond 20%. By changing the way we farm, we can bring about an end. An end to socioeconomic inequality, an end to supply shortages, an end to waste, and an end to world hunger. Future farming is... It's, it's opening new doorways for a number of companies to be invested here. Uh, we are talking about companies that have historically been only in the manufacturing center. Promises to be more sustainable, deliver better yields for a growing population, and at the end of the day, make farmers' lives easier and more reliable. Is where we get um, you know almost three times the yield of what our conventional crop uh, uh, yield uh, used to be. Just around the corner. To keep tabs on what's around the corner, subscribe below to get notified about new episodes.